Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. As always, we're honored to have the one and only Mr. Derek Johnson join us again for our monthly roundtable of various and sundry subjects that are uh, paramount of importance right now in, in the nation's history. And again, if you are new, please do like and subscribe to the channel and hit that personalization button so that you won't uh, miss any of the podcasts as they come up for alerts. Um, as you know, Derek is a decorated Army veteran. He is a country music singer and songwriter, and he also has a uh, very popular book, The Midnight Rider Rides Again, which we'll be talking about at the end. So we are pleased and honored, as always, to have Mr. Derek Johnson on our podcast. Derek, thanks for being here. We appreciate it, as always. Well, it's good, it's good to be here. So, Yep, it's an honor to have you. Okay, so um, I guess the first question, Derek, right off the bat is, is something I, I think it's been talked about a little bit, but maybe not as much as I think it should be. And because you have such a, 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 a robust set of, of knowledge in terms of everything, but especially in geopolitical and matters of war and matters of President Trump, I thought would, you'd be the appropriate person to ask. And that is, um, we have the Brunson case which from my understanding has been decided in his favor, which would clearly indicate a reversal of the 2020 election fraudulent scam and would ostensibly put him put President Trump back in the White House. Um, when and if do you see this happening? And would that mean that there is in fact not going to be an election? Well, I'm kind of in uh, disagreement with, with that whole uh, thing only for not because of who they are or anything of that nature. This is where people kind of get, you know, where you, you kind of, I get asked a question and then I get, you know, I get to tell my spin on it. But, you know, it's the same thing when I get asked about certain general out there and different people. People get hung up on names and different things. But I think the, the main thing to keep in mind with all this is that, one, I tell people, and, and, it, and it's clear, uh, this was never about the 2020 election alone. This was about local level, state level, federal level, but all elections, because once again, I mean, where it really counts uh, with elections a lot more are in our state level first. Um, that produces uh, our uh, U.S. senators and U.S. congressmen. Um, so, you know, that's first things first. The other thing is, like I tell people, is that what I feel like my mission is, per se, if there's any such thing, but uh, where I am right now with God, where God put me is to show people the, the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the dash on President Trump's hat stands for something. And it's like I tell people, he didn't live 78 years to get to get that age and forget the difference in a comma and a little and. Uh, because if Donald Trump was a former president, there should be a comma there or an and symbol. Uh, there's a dash, which means continuity. Um, and they're already talking about it. RSBN or, or one of those networks that was broadcasting the Atlanta um, speech this past weekend, they said it. The 45th and 47th Commander in Chief and 46th, if you know what I mean. And that's what they said. Uh, so this is slowly trickling out. Where I don't like to talk about that case in a different manner is the fact that I, I'm not here to attack people. I don't attack people from the standpoint of I'm an attacker and, oh, I'm the only one to listen to. Where I think people are hanging up with this whole thing is they're still looking for some little miracle sure shot that's just going to put President Trump back in in the, in the sense of what's going to make them feel good. This whole operation had to be done lawfully for the integrity of our foundation. Because if we ever deviated from our foundation, we might as well just toss it all aside and start all over. And that's not what we needed. We have a solid foundation. So the laws and the orders put into place way back in November. Well, I say November. When President Trump won the election on November the 8th, 2016, there's going to be evidence that shows that the military also took the 2016 evidence and they were able to prevent the Democrats from cheating because there's no other way that any other person would have been able to get into the White House with the cheating and the, the election fraud that was going on with the federal corporation, what President Trump calls the Washington establishment, the swamp. 
So there had to be a breakage in that, but it was still lawful because the Constitution and the Declaration, the Declaration is more important than the Constitution because the Declaration gives us, the people, the right to change the government if the government of the Constitution doesn't use the Constitution correctly. So the Constitution don't go away. You just set it back on its foundation. So the military steps in November. They got President Trump in. Then he started doing things lawfully with legislation. And it's all legislation that is kind of like I use two hands where it's like you got the, the federal corporation use it and they're using it this way. But President Trump and the military and also the Congress and the foreign leaders and the secret military that's all been outlined in legislation and also uh, articles, they're taking it and reversing it on them. And these group of people can't say, you can't do that, right? So these laws and orders are in place. And Executive Order 13848, we've never had a law in place that captures the fraudulent evidence. We do have election laws, we have election rules and what a presidential candidate can and can't do and all these things, but we've never had a law in place that captures that evidence. That law is Donald Trump's executive order with a national emergency signed September the 12th, 2018. So they already knew that dash explains already that no one was going to be taking oaths because this was already an occupation, which is an operation. And so what part I've read about it, just because I have to read those things because that is the topic out there, but I have a friend who lives in Nashville. I won't say their name just because, but they're an attorney and uh, their parents are federal attorneys um, and judges. All right. So because I'm not an attorney, I sent over this thing and I said, tell me what this says. I already know. And so I told what I thought it said, and then they go, well, first off, that's not how we type when we uh, respond to something. There was a certain thing that had brackets a certain way. She said, that don't even look real. And I said, well, it's on the Supreme Court.gov. Here's the actual website. Then she, she came back around. I'll say it's a she. She came back around and she goes, well, it's still not correct how you type it out, but it's saying they don't want anything to do with this case whatsoever. All right. The other thing that I read in the case is if you're going to make a case about Donald John Trump still being president and all these other things, you don't want to put in there that, that this caused you some kind of grievance and some kind of, oh, I couldn't go to work because all these people didn't take a note. The, the way it reads, it gives you the heebie-jeebies. All right. That's, for, that's my opinion. But once again, I go with either you believe in Donald Trump and the military, and the military wasn't going to step in in certain ways that were unlawful. Uh, so, you know, there's some generals out there that say that, which is accurate. They're not going to come in and just save the day. However, the military are in their operations, and then the continent of operations are doing what it's supposed to be doing. All right. And so you either believe in President Trump, as well as show people, and what he says, and you learn to listen to him versus hear. All right, because he everything he says is outlined in laws and orders. Or you come over to this side that that's just pushing all these different things out there that that that's more of a spoon fed ideology. And to me, it takes away from the military. It just takes away from the integrity of the military, the integrity of military laws, orders, regulations, customs, plus how they pair with federal. And there's clear evidence that's going to show when this is all said and done that there were a lot of foreign leaders, but also U.S. leaders that people thought may have been bad, that are playing a good role to smoke out the bad. Um, and they did this for the greater good of humanity. So the dash already explains that they knew that these people weren't going to be taking their oaths. Um, and that's, that's just my take. Now, I don't think there was ever going to be, I personally wanted President Trump to come back before now. In another manner, I wouldn't have minded there being more visual military already. I wouldn't have minded that. But I do understand and see how they wanted to keep civil rest. They wanted to do everything by the utmost integrity, not just a little bit of it, of our foundation, and how this was going to run into November. 
Now, we also have evidence of President Trump on full send last April. He said that it won't be a traditional election, even though he didn't say the full word traditional. He stopped and he deflected, which that's already an optic for people. When he deflects or he stops, he, he's giving you enough and he's like, oh, you know, I can't tell you everything. So it won't be a tradition. And he stopped and then he deflected. And then I'd have to check the date of it. It was last month or either June. He was in Vegas. And he said, I hope the military revolts at the voting booth. Mm -hmm. We don't vote at voting booths, ladies and gentlemen, not 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 even active duty. Now, reserves and National Guard can because they're not full time active duty unless there are federalized and they're somewhere else during an election. They're going to be voting absentee ballot. And that's what active duty does. So that what President Trump saying he hopes the military votes for him. That would be President Trump saying, you're going to see something with the, the military somewhere, somehow, some capacity. Now, if Donald Trump was a former president and he said that, that would be a seditious act to overthrow the government, which would be breaking a federal law. So that shows you he's not. I mean, it shows people like me he's not. But if you're someone that's sitting in a neutral seat and you don't have any clue about any of this, um, you should want to go do things by the integrity as well. And if Donald Trump was a former president, that would be breaking federal law. He'd be breaking his own laws and orders. So then that would make him a, a liar. And I don't believe that. So I tell people, you got to believe in that 45-47 and all of it and seek to understand what that dash is. Or you're just going to believe a bunch of other stuff out there that don't really uh, have anything to do with anything. but. You know, if I'm wrong, then I'll be wrong. But I, I just don't think that they used a bunch of civilians that no one's ever heard of. Um, I don't I don't believe that. But that's just me. Sure. No, I mean, that's fine. That's why we wanted your take on things. Um, and thank you for the clarification of all the intricacies within that. Um, next question I had for you, uh, Derek, was were you surprised by the selection of J.D. Vance? as VP? And if not, do you see it as part of a bigger arrangement, uh, maybe to expose some of the evil? Because as you know, President Trump keeps his friends close as an enemy's closer. Well, I know a lot of patriots were upset with that. They were thinking that uh, someone was going to come out of their grave and uh, and be uh, the, the one, one that shot the world. But you know, no, I, I live in the reality world of, of military, first off. And the military goes by military laws, orders, regulations, customs, traditions, and then there's a way they pair uh, with the executive orders and treaties um, and, and international laws and different things of that nature. Um, but I wasn't shocked in another manner because I think once people realize what the end goal is, you know, our government was never supposed to look like this whatsoever. It was never supposed to be Oh, my guy got in and your guy is going to do this. You know, da, da, da. it was never supposed to be your guy versus my guy. And so I think possibly what they could be doing, the same thing, the reason why I believe that they went ahead and they see when President Trump said in January 13th, 2021 is when I think the first time he could have said it. He could have said it before then, but he definitely hit on that the 25th was going to come back to haunt Joe Biden. Well, how genius was it that they they had it? It's all an occupation. But once again, for the ones that think it's real, they made the Democrats use the 25th on him, not President Trump and not Republicans making it look like a dictatorship. They made their own people do that. Now, I think with using Kamala, who's a person of color, it is what it is. She's a person of color. Now they're trying to play the race card heavily in the in the mainstream. What I believe they're going to do with that is spin it around and show because President Trump's already telling everybody this speeches. He just started it at about five speeches ago. He just started saying Biden got 14 million votes. That ain't nothing. I mean, when you look at the, the voters out there, so when that executive order 13848 shows how many votes he got and it's 14 million, everybody's going to know that President Trump said that way back here. Right. As he's always 10 steps ahead with Kamala, I believe they're going to show that there's not really there's racism in tiny pockets of the ignorant world of the U.S., but it's not in the in the mass majority of us.
because all, all of us know when you get over 40, racism requires energy. And it's a lot of energy we just don't have. All right. So with J.D. Vance, to tie all that in, what I think President Trump could have done is, once again, my opinion, but when you have someone that, that's visually against you or verbally said things against you, and all of a sudden they see the light, well, there's only one way to know. My grandpa used to say this all the time. Um, he'd be 112 today. Uh, so he's old, old school. But when Jimmy Swagger got on national TV and told the whole world that he had sinned, all right, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to tell anybody. He didn't have to tell anybody but his family and his wife. And he didn't have to do that. Now, I'm not an advocate of uh, adultery or cheating on your wife or your spouse. All I'm saying is he didn't have to do that. He could have asked forgiveness in his heart and consciously walked away. But his moral conscience got the best of him because he has a moral conscience. And he told his wife. He told his family. He told his church family. And then he broadcast it to the world. And then what happened to Jimmy Swagger? He lost half instantly of his church and the world that watched him across the, the, the world, the, the church which would mean monetar monetarily took a hit, even though it's not supposed to be about monetary with preachers. I get that. But it's a principle that I'm talking about. My grandpa said, after the people kept get, you just kept talking about him, kept talking about him. My grandpa said, once a man says he's sorry, that's all he can say. And then it's between him and God. And then why do people keep on and on and on? Because when we have sinned or done something wrong or flipped somebody off or got mad at somebody at work or whatever it is, you want them to forgive you and forget about it, right? And maybe not forget from the standpoint of another man. But I think, like, look at Roseanne. I love Roseanne, and Roseanne's a great person, and she didn't like President Trump to begin with, but then what happened? The laws and the orders. She started reading what's going on. She's like, oh, this is awesome. All these people are away. Well, I don't know J.D. Vance personally. I know what he said about President Trump, and I know that's where people took arms against him mainly. But once again, until you know somebody and you know their heart, and then you know what their motives are, uh, you know, with J.D. being a Marine Corps veteran, um, I've leaned to believe that, once again, he was part of the secret military that was saying that at that time to smoke out the rats where he is. And a lot of people don't realize that's why that dash in the middle, you have to take in the occupation. We want to smoke out as many rats as possible that are double-edged sword right here. It The liberals are one thing. Liberals, progressives, Marxists, socialists, they're all who they are, and we know it. The ones that are the most dangerous are the ones that look like us, talk like us, walk like us. Then you got to have a certain set of skills to be able to go, okay, they they say all these things, 95, 98% of it's perfect. But we're, what is that? What's that two to, to five percent of what they're doing somewhere else? Mm -hmm. And I personally lean that that JD was someone who was a part of this operation, Marine Corps veteran, Marine Corps veteran. I, I lean to this was still within the operation, um, and I'm going to lean that way right now. I also think it's kind of interesting this last name. If you look up Vance, the last name means marshland. Uh, so, you know, President Trump's talking about draining the swamp. Mm. I don't know. If you want to get out there on a limb, I don't mind going out on a limb sometimes. I think that's a what, – what a what's the coincidence of that? Um, and then – Take into consideration, once again, there's not going to be a traditional election. There, he's talking about the military revolting. So I wouldn't put too much stock into anything right now until we see how they unveil what all we've witnessed, those of us that knows what we've read and seen. Yeah, yeah. That's, it'll be interesting, like you said. It, not all has been revealed yet, so we'll have to see how it plays out. But I, so I wanted to kind of get your you know, 30,000 quasi foot view on it. Actually, I wasn't going to ask you this question, but you brought it up and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't. And that is, uh, you mentioned Kamala. Um, we know that that's just a 
a short, uh, it's almost like a, a temp job, so to speak, um, for President Trump resumes. But um, do you think she's going to pick Hillary as her VP running mate? Well, no, you know, I, I often thought, what if, what if they bring Hillary back, you know, in another manner? Because, I mean, you know, what they're showing to everybody is that the Democratic National Convention, they don't, they don't care what people think. They don't care what their own people think. Um, and so, I don't know, it, that would be an interesting thing to see her come in as a, as a, a VP because anybody that knows the real Hillary knows that that would be a slap in her face to be a, a, a you know, a VP. Um, so, or a VP candidate rather. Um, so I don't know. That's an that would be an interesting thing to see what they try. Um, you know, it it's all operational anyway. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I want people to look at it from the standpoint of what it, what are the what are the, uh, the the military secret military doing to to uh, spin this around? But mm. you know, once again, I mean, we've already seen what happened in Atlanta um, with the. Uh, you know, the, the twerking and all that stuff. I mean, you know, if, if they think that, that that's middle-class America everywhere, then uh, they're already doomed, you know. Uh, but then they, they'd say, well, you you two are, uh, you know, white guys talking about twerking, <laughs> you know, and they, they, they try to, they try to pin us on that. But, you know, it's like, I mean, at, at the end of the day, if they're going to use it, then we are able to talk about it. Uh, but it's still part of the operation. And, I don't know. I think it'd be interesting if they bring Hillary back. Um, I saw an interesting take, and I don't know who did it, so I wish I could quote who the guy is um, to give him credit. But if he sees this, maybe, you know, but there's someone out there that takes the cue and he, he reverses it and he reads them backwards. So if you take the first cue post and you flip it over and you read them from number of 4,699, whatever it is, and you read it backwards, well, then it puts Hillary being arrested in October, late October, which would be days before November. I, I mean, it, 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 the guy makes a pretty solid point. I listened to it enough, and I was like, man, that makes that, that actually makes pretty good sense. Like, if, mm -hmm. if you flip them and go read a little bit of them, and I told that to someone that studies Q really, really well, and they went and studied it and they found a few posts that that actually they were like, oh my gosh, that makes more sense than it does forward to back. It, it's backward to forward. So I mean, that could make sense because we believe and and, and we have evidence that Biden ain't real, Kamala's not real, uh, Fetterman and all these different people we've seen that have been so for us to think. You know, for for patriots to think that there's not an answer to all this and going to be some big reveal party, that's also foolish. We got to see what we've been watching. We got to see a finale. So that that makes a lot of sense to me. So what if they did bring her back? Mm -hmm. uh, what if I think she may be the arrest that shocks the world, right? So yeah. I don't know. That's just it's it's interesting. But when you when you reverse it and you go back and read them. And then you take that military uh, special operations command booklet, that diagram I show, and you read it from the bottom up, the clandestine and the overt. God, I mean, it, it 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 almost matches perfect based on what these say we've seen. And if you, it, those of us that have been following it, we can go back and go, yeah, 2016 looked like that, 2017, 2018, 2019. And then you take that and you flip it and reverse it, and you're like, Wow, that that actually pairs better than anything I've seen. Um, even though the military is working on laws and orders of the military, they don't work with Q from that angle. But uh, but I, I tell you, it's a, it makes a pretty good case. Be interesting to watch. I mean, it would also you know highlight exposure of what we already know. We've been following the, the massive amounts of atrocities and misgivings that that family's been notorious for would put them front and center and and like you said with the arrest it would kind of you know set that all up quite well so kind of hoping she does pick her uh, or whoever that is as you said so well, thanks see, for I, if i go back real fast too i mean i hear people all the time come up you know i see it in the comment box they're already dead they're dead you wouldn't want these people dead 
You want them sitting somewhere having to watch all this on TV. You want them to watch their demise. Uh, you know, that, that to me, that's that, you know, when people say they're already gone and they're, and I'm like, no, man, they, you want them to be sitting somewhere watching this all on TV every day. Now, some people wouldn't like, oh, that's punishment. Yeah, well, that's what they need. They need to watch their legacy go right down the drain. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think that they're doing right now. They're watching all these people. Mm -hmm. And everybody's turning now. Elon Musk, you got the BLM founder, um, someone else just uh, yesterday, I can't remember who it is, but there's, they're, they're making them slightly, they're all turning. They're all turning. And uh, so, you know, they're, we're on turn four. That's what I did a podcast last night, and I named it turn four. We're in turn four of the, of the race. We're there. And we're on that home stretch. And I'm like, you want, you want these people to be watching their own demise. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted to add that in there, like people that that think like that, like, no, you, you need to get excited in another manner. Right. We're living through the greatest moment in the world, uh, in world history. Uh, to point to date. Agreed, without question. Um, so the next question would be is just I don't know how we cannot talk about it because our community is so focused on it, but also it's just it's front and center, as you well know. We've talked about it. You talked about it with the QFS and that is. We have the inevitable global financial reset for God's people staring us right in the face. And then we have in October, the BRICS big meeting scheduled in Moscow. There's roughly 100 nations with roughly 70, 80 percent of the world's population that's going to be present. Um, how do you see this all playing out in, in the next uh, few you know, weeks to months ahead? Well, I saw where El Salvador is expressing interest of joining BRICS. So, I mean, there's so many, uh, so many nations that's dumping the U.S. dollar. Um, and you know, that's nothing scary. I know a lot of people out there, they're scared of Bitcoin and scared of, of digital currencies and things of that nature. But, um, you know, that what people need to be scared of are the wrong people, uh, getting back in control. It's not the actual system itself. It's the people who code it and people who run it, uh, maintain it. Um, so, you know, if you go back to president Trump's Indo-Pacific uh, region agreement, uh, Pompeo mentions in there about, you know, which is President Trump saying, but it's in the Pompeo section, that nations need to be independent, sovereign nations on their own. And we're watching that. We've seen that uh, in history. Zimbabwe, they have tried to revalue, but they, it always plummeted. It hasn't done that. This is first time in history. Uh, and you see the Iraqi dinar and all the things that's going on. And, uh, you know, the the even the the OCC.gov, they give you a hint. It's a, it is a, a warning saying this is what a scam looks like. But if they're showing you what a scam looks like, they're telling you what's going to be taking place. It talks about the global reset of the currency. So everybody's watching that. Uh, the, obviously, the stock market had a bad, bad day yesterday. Um, so all these, uh, all these things are showing that. President Trump's already said way back in 2019, whoever takes over, in quote unquote 2020. This is all planned, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So um now, President Trump, I tell people all the time, he knows what he's doing. That's why they had a businessman come in with a, a system that's set up like a federal corporation. What better person to do so than that? I mean, it's all strategically planned, every bit of it. Um, so I just see, uh, like I said, I mean, we're we're gonna have reciprocal trade. President Trump said he's going to put in a reciprocal uh, trade act as soon as he's uh, president again from a president standing. And when people hear that, people, he, he's already said somewhere else, he said, uh, there's certain things I can do as a president that I can't mm -hmm. elsewhere. So people hear that, they don't realize that he's not saying he's not president. He's a wartime president that comes with different laws and orders. Um, and they're all invoked. So you know, the reciprocal trade act. So if China puts a 300% tariff on our good, then we're going to hit them with 300% somewhere. Uh, but all this global currency reset, that's what got us in the trillion dollars of debt anyway, because we have more countries exchanging our dollar with each other. It's one thing if we were exchanging it back and forth with our dollar to their currency and their currency to our dollar. No, we had other nations using the U.S. dollar between each other. Mm -hmm. So those serial numbers, ladies and gentlemen, although uh, a lot of people don't realize these dollars this has serial numbers on it. We can't account for it. So what did our corporation do? We'll just print more. Well, they printed more. 
because they wouldn't be tough, as President Trump said, like with NATO and all these different people. So I see it. I mean, I you know, I, it, for the people that's in the stock market, I can't give them advice. I mean, you know, I hear people all the time, you know, should I pull this? Should I do that? And I'm like, look, I can't tell you what to do. But all I'm saying is I don't have stock and I wouldn't buy stock right now. Um, mm -hmm. Me personally, I wouldn't do that. I would be buying silver and gold, um, and that's what I would be doing. Uh, but I can't tell you what you can and can't do, and nor should I try. Um, I can just tell you that to read what's going on. And so all this global currency, it's just a reset, and we're going to set it back on our foundation, and we're going to clean that U.S. dollar out, and we're going to have gold and silver to back. Mm -hmm. um, and then President Trump told us the last it was weekend uh, before this past one, at Bitcoin in Nashville, um, you know, about, hey, you know, here's what's going to take place. We're going to protect Bitcoin. We're going to uh, protect cryptocurrency. We're going to, uh, you know, have this, this and this. Um, so, you know, ladies and gentlemen, it's not to be afraid of. You got the best person in, in, the, in the world that knows what he's doing. Um, so, you know, all the all these other nations, they're no concern of ours in a different manner. Um, and the Brits thing, once again, uh, President Trump is well aware of what's going on there, and you know it's nothing to be afraid of. We're just going through a massive reset, um, and it's all going to be good. He, he talks about like, going to end. Uh, he called it tip tax. Well, that's income tax, ladies and gentlemen. That's not. There's no such thing as a tip tax. <laughs> um, and if everybody remember him in the back, way back, I can't. I had to go back and think when he said it, but he he talked about a a flat tax, like a fourteen percent flat tax mm -hmm. on certain things and then the rest of us will be free from other things income tax and all these other other things right we're already taxed out the rear end in every state every state there is a tax for a tax for a tax uh every product every service i mean everything has a tax on it uh, so you know a lot of those taxes were created for as we know not not good reasons is because people were lazy in leadership and they didn't know how to create uh value elsewhere but it's also because our federal system wasn't doing it either so uh but i don't know you know how how quick all that's gonna unroll unveil and whatnot but it's already doing it pretty rapid mm -hmm. um but you know i think i personally think what they'll do i don't know but I think they'll have to do this in like a general assembly type setting somewhere down the road to to have all these world leaders where it don't look like just President Trump, but it'll be a lot of world leaders explaining what what's going on and what it's going to look like and this that you know from that angle uh, because this isn't just the U.S. that's uh, you know that's going through anything. The whole world's going through a reset, ladies and gentlemen. So you know, and I think that's where the unveil will come is is that. All the world leaders that have been in this, that alliance will say, here's what we've been doing, this, what this, and this, that, you know, and outline it from that angle. Um, that's what would make sense to me, but we'll see. Indeed. And uh, if I, a couple of points quickly, if I may, Derek, to the back to what you said, I'm really glad you brought up the India Asia Pacific in 2020 because, you know, when President Trump and Pompeo orchestrated that, they actually, if you recall, they spent almost a trillion dollars of fake Fed money into Vietnam to help that economy, which goes on the backs of the dinar and the dong and all these other currencies and bonds like you talked about, which is actually quite exciting because if you're positioned correctly, which we have most of our constituents and our audience doing, um, it's really going to allow God's people to get the wealth of the wicked for the righteous to do the kingdom work, right? And then your other point about Bitcoin, um, after his conference, he even said, as you know, he said, Hey, maybe I'll uh, put a little bit of Bitcoin uh, into the 35 trillion in debt to pay it off, which we kind of know has already been done. But again, he's got to put that optically out as a double message. So um, what you're saying is really important on, uh, in conjunction with that, because it, it paints a picture for both we patriots and the, the layperson to kind of know, you know where this is all going. So um, one last question for today, which kind of dovetails on this subject, which I think might add to the veracity of what you're saying, which is that um, it's, I thought it was interesting, Derek, from a financial and a military standpoint, or militaristically, which is to say that Iran has admitted publicly that they have nuclear weapons, which we've never seen that before, at least I've never seen it before historically, right? 
Um, and also there's talk about them attacking the Holy Land of Israel, the true Jews uh, specifically. Um, President Trump mentioned earlier today on a podcast that he expected on good authority that Iran would be attacking Israel. And then we expect Israel to counterstrike the secret nuclear power plants as per the prophetic word of Kim Clement. Um, how do you see all that playing out here in the short term as far as that? Well, you know, President Trump says all the time about, you know, and he said it again heavily uh, in Atlanta, I will prevent uh, World War III and nuclear war. Um, and he's been saying this for, I mean, I don't know how long he's been saying it now. He's been saying it so long that I will prevent uh, nuclear war and World War III. Um, and he talks about Ukraine when I'm the presidential elect. Um, he said, I will have it ended in less than 24 hours. And I think the, the best thing is you always got to use Ukraine. It's probably the best analogy first to show people what's going on everywhere else. But uh, what's going on in Israel is already outlined as well. When you go back to 2018 and 2019, the army started putting out um uh, they put out articles on military.com and a few others. Now, most Americans won't know about those uh, publications because if you're not a veteran, you probably never heard of these. But uh, defense magazines, different things, uh, publications started putting out little things like this, subterranean warfare. Well, what's what shows this is President Trump and the dash. June 24, 2018, military.com, the army spending $572 million training our soldiers for our next wars will be in mega cities, not inside them, but beneath them. That's subterranean warfare. 2019, DARPA started getting immediate access to all universities, University of Alabama, University of Florida, yada, yada, universities, tunnels for military access. All right, August 2019, the uh, Defense uh, Intelligence Agency put out a publication on Iran, all right, outlining their facilities, underground facilities, um, and it talked about uh, denial and things of that nature. It talks a lot about unconventional warfare, which outlines the April 2016 Special Operations Command publication on what was to come, underground facilities. Government in exile, shadow government, counterinsurgencies, all these different kind of unconventional and ir irregular warfare, which tie into the 50 U.S. Code, Section 1550 that President Trump and Congress put into place where it talks about irregular warfare, irregular military movement, uh, which would be your even guerrilla warfare, asymmetrical warfare, subterranean warfare. Um, so there's a lot of that different kind of warfare. August 2019 as well, the Washington Examiner put out an article, our wars are going to the sewers and the tunnels. Well, President Trump says all the time, we're not paying for it anymore. We're not. We've been the world's police. No more. Someone else will pay for it. Well, President Trump put in an executive order in March 29th, 2017, combating the opioids crisis. Well, in August 2019, Johnson & Johnson lost the opioids case in the state of Oklahoma, guess how much money they were forced to pay? $572 million. Well, there's the June 24th article. There's your Washington Examiner in August 2019. And then in May 2019, backing up, I saved it for last, there's a publication by the Army from Fort Leavenworth, War College, what they're teaching the officers what was coming. This officer writes his publication, Army.mil site, Shaping the deep fight operational implications of the subterranean warfare is what it's titled with a chapter in there. It says Hamas, Gaza, Egypt, cross border operations. This was 2019 and it tells what? $572 million in it. Then you go look at the Canadian defense manuals. We align with the US and Israel. US is spending $572 million. That was in 2020. So all these publications and articles from four and five years ago show what's going on right now in Israel. Same thing with Ukraine. President Trump, the soccer ball, the soccer ball in, in Helsinki, Finland, July 16, 2018. That was the balls in your court. So this all goes back to what happened with the Soviet Union way back 
when the federal corporation made the USSR bust up. Why? Why did they make them bust up? What, what, was, the, what was the USSR doing back then that required this federal corporation to come in there and tell them what they're going to do and divide their land up? Well, fast forward, 2014, big year. 2014, you had Victoria Newland securing a billion dollars in defense budget for Ukraine. Is that the same billion dollars that Joe Biden threatened that they wouldn't receive if they wouldn't fire a certain somebody? Probably so. She's also the same person who said what? F, F-U-C-K, F the European Union. Sure, that's not people you want to be saying F-U-C-K uh, to or your own people, right? Which shows that they were doing this on their own. All right, Obama wrote four executive orders in 2014, extraordinary threats with Ukraine. Four executive orders in one year for Ukraine, and they're a threat to how? All right, then Joe Biden, as vice president, made seven trips in seven months on our taxpayer money to Ukraine in the same 2014 year. Also the same 2014 year, they only have one election, so it's one round of the election, versus two rounds. They got their guy in. Obama called him three days later. Congratulations, we're ready to roll, right? So then you fast forward to 2018. Russia was in a treaty, it's called a Commonwealth Treaty, CIS Treaty with Ukraine. Ukraine broke that. Well, it was the same year that Vladimir Putin handed Donald Trump the soccer ball. So then fast forward all through 2021 and 2022, early 2022, Victoria Newland and the press secretary said there are no biochemical weapon labs in Ukraine. March the 8th, 2022, just a couple of weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine, Victoria Newland, who is now the undersecretary for Biden, is under oath. Marco Rubio of Florida. Are there bioweapon labs, biochemical labs in Ukraine? Yes, but we're afraid the Russians are going to get them. All right. So all this shows. And who? Who didn't play? Who didn't play in the federal? I mean, in the in the FIFA World Cup of soccer, Russia. All right. So don't that soccer ball look a little bit more beautiful, right? Well, what people don't realize is back way back on October 2018, October the 20th to be specific, President Trump broke. We got out of the. It's called an Intermediate Range uh, Nuclear Forces Treaty. That was three months after the soccer ball. Then he told Vladimir Putin he needs to do the same thing. Well, it need to be cohesive, it need to be cordial. All right. Five months later, February 2020, I mean 2019, excuse me. Guess what happened? Russia gets out of, they do the same thing. All right. They agreed to this. So that was a 1987 treaty, which was before the what? Iron Curtain, right? So everybody got to, this stuff goes way back and they're pointing fingers or showing the federal corporation. Well, now Iran and all this chatter, right? Well, we got, people got to remember before President Trump was elected, remember what Hillary and all of them were saying about President Trump? He'll get us in a nuclear war with North Korea. His attitude and his his temperament, blah, 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 blah. Well, that didn't happen. He didn't even start a single foreign war. We ended the caliphate, he did take care of what we were doing in Iraq and Afghanistan because we were already there. It shouldn't have been there in the first place. When people find out the truth about 9-11, they're going to know that there are no such thing as weapons of mass destruction. All right. So all this stuff goes together like a little perfect storm. Well, that intermediate nuclear forces treaty, um, it talks about, and I, I pulled it up where I could read it and save time, but it basically implements what what we call a mad doctrine all right it's called mutually assured destruction and i'll just read it really quick it, it says this this is this and this is what everybody's going to see with president trump saying i will prevent world war three i will prevent nuclear war it says this this and this is the theory of it so the mutually assured destruction is a doctrine of military strategy and national security policy, which posits that a full scale of nuclear weapons by an attacker on a nuclear armed defender with second strike capabilities would result in the complete annihilation of both the attacker and the defender. 
It is based on the theory of rational deterrence, which holds that the threat of using strong weapons against the enemy prevents the enemy's use of those same weapons. The strategy is a form of Nash equilibrium, which once armed, neither side has any incentive to initiate a conflict or disarm. The result is nuclear peace, which is the presence of nuclear weapons decreases the risk of crisis escalation, since parties will seek to avoid situations that could lead to the use of nuclear weapons. So what I think is going to happen is, you know, there's going to be some kind of march up and then a standoff. Now, I do think that there may be a possible chance that that Iran is is dealt with in another manner. I think that there could be uh, maybe an annihilation of, of Iran, even though I believe most of that's already happened. People are just going to see the after effects of it. Uh, but um, once again, you know, the guys that, that wrote the forward on my book, uh, you know, they the colonel and a lieutenant colonel retired special operations. Um, the 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 full bird colonel retired. I've been showing him every day. Matter of fact, this morning, two two uh B-52 bombers were in the sky this morning flying all over Louisiana, um, which they are at Shreveport, Louisiana, is where they're at. But still, they've been flying all over. And he said personally, he has not seen a B-52 bomber in the air since we started the war in Iraq. All right. So, you know. It, we, these guys aren't just flying to be flying. Um, and daily, every day, there's at least one uh, E6 to two E6, which are uh, in the family of the Doomsday plane, but they're a, uh, E6 Mercury. Um, there's at least two of those in the sky daily, which would be in the form, once again, in the nuclear family. Today, the, the Doomsday plane was flying out of San Antonio back up to Nebraska. The, the doomsday plan has been active more than it's been active in a long time. Uh, that's your nuclear command in the sky for the president. Uh, so, you know, it's been active more than it's, you know, and it's not training when it's, when it's going over the seas and it's uh, two or three in the sky at the same time. I have a, a friend of mine that was a contractor for the doomsday plane. And uh, we talk about this all the time. When there's two in the sky together, that means business is going on. When there's three in the sky, that means for sure business is going on. And last August, there were three in the sky at the same time in Washington State. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got that captured. Uh, so there's been a lot already happening. Um, and, uh, you know, so as far as will we see any visuals, I think we will see a little bit possibly, but um, I don't know when and where and how. But all the, out all the outline of the Israel and the Ukraine, though, I mean, we're talking about six and you know four to six years old material that's showing what's taking place to the t not just a, a synopsis uh but 572 million dollars is is i mean it's, it's so accurate um but you know what what will that look like i it's going to be president trump somehow as that's, that's what we know you know so definitely well, thanks, Derek, for all of your militaristic knowledge and the way that you break it down in a very analytical and yet digestible manner. I, I certainly appreciate it, and I'm sure our audience does, and yours does as well. Um, so, as always, I'll give you the floor, last thoughts, and where can people get your book? Yeah, I mean, you know, I tell people, I mean, it, I, I guess what I want people to feel is the feeling of if you are frustrated, if you're upset, you're tired, you're exhausted, you know, all just all the definitions you can put on uh, that that makes you uh, tired of this, as you call it. Um, you know, I think that 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 needs to be flipped over to a positive towards President Trump, our military, our military generals, our military leaders, the foreign leaders and all the different leaders that are a part of this, uh, because what they've done in seven and a half years is I mean, it's just hard to, it, if you'd have gone back 10 years ago, 15 years ago and said, hey, there's going to be a plan that's about to happen. And it's going to do this, 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 this. And it, it, there's a bunch of this is in this time period. You know, even even your colonels and your generals would be like, ah, uh, maybe. But, you know, it would have to go pretty smooth and then have to have a lot of people with one heartbeat. Meaning everybody's in sync and everybody 
We're on the same page. And there's not going to be any egos or anything that gets in the way. That That is the, the biggest part to show people that a lot of egos had to come down for this. And I just want people to see that. I mean, that when, we, when I say laws and orders, the laws and the orders have visuals to go with every one of them that everybody has seen. You just didn't realize what you're watching if you didn't know this law and order. And so they pair. And, uh, you know, it's not that I, you know, don't know that there's people losing their life across the world. There are, but we, in any kind of change or any kind of, I'm not exempt from it. You're not exempt from it. We both know that. We're not exempt from it. Uh, we, we're not, you know, we're susceptible to be anything because we're, we're picking up a torch and we're carrying it on behalf of what's above us, like President Trump and the ones that we know. So it's, you know. You, we, we, the Bible says we'll be persecuted if if we stand for Christ or stand for God. He tells us that. Uh, but it's the fact that, well, when you realize that, well, I'm going to die anyway. That's what I tell people. I'm going to die anyway. Well, I'm going to die with a good cause, if anything. I'm not going to be down in the corner, hunker down. Or, oh, like Chicken Little, the world's falling on me. I'm going to have that attitude where I'm going to stand there and look the devil in the face and go, huh, is that all you got? <laughs> Might want to try a little harder. Right. So the laws and the orders show what that dash is. And I just want people to, to, you know, appreciate more of what President Trump has taken on with his face, his brand, his image, but also his family and what they've mm -hmm. taken on. Um, and then also all the people that are around him that that have also taken it as well. And these leaders, uh, there is a end goal what it's going to look like, how they're going to unveil it. I don't know, but I do know that, you know, when you're a cowboy, you don't worry about the fall. Uh, you just, you just get on the bull and ride. Um, and I love my, one of my favorite cowboys of all time. And I'll quote him as tough Hedeman. And they ask him, how did he, uh, how did he have a different attitude than all of the cowboys? And he said, man, bull riding ain't rocket science. You got to get on the dang bull and ride, right? It, it, it's not rocket science. There's no set formula to bull riding. All right. And is it rough? Yeah. That's, you know, it's, it's not a, it's not easy. Uh, but that's kind of what, where we are right now. And if everybody embrace it and flip their attitudes around and then seek to understand that dash, man, it's going to change your world. It's going to change your life. Um, and apply that every day and apply it in your life every day. So, uh, the book is, uh, this thing right here. It's, uh, it's not a it's not a novel, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a workbook, uh, and most of that beginning, all that long stuff at the beginning that I put in the the uh, the Constitution. Um, I put all the stuff in there that people need to see and read again. Uh, the explanation of the three branches of government: what are national emergencies? What are uh, you know? What are all your different uh, like executive orders? What they are and what they you know, but. It's just a chronological order of all the laws and orders of the military laws and orders and customs and traditions paired with the federal legislation and uh, how President Trump and the generals and, and the world leaders pulled this off with the full bird colonel, special operations, former deputy commander of Delta Force, and also a uh, lieutenant colonel retired from uh, the Australian forces, um, special operations of how they pulled this off and then I come in behind it and show it. So you can get it on uh, rattletrap1776.com. Uh, you have to click on see more gear and it'll go over to my Shopify page. And if you're international, the only option is uh, Amazon. And then also if you don't like, you know, paperback, then you have Amazon Kindle that you can get that. And I know a lot of people have been asking about audio. So I'll say that on here too. We don't have audio yet. However, because you can get it on Kindle, there is a certain way, and maybe you have a friend or family member that can show you this, but there's a way that Apple, there's a device on Apple that'll read it for you. Um, so that there is an option for audio uh, that way. You just have to Google how to do that. I don't know how to do that, but I like reading stuff versus hearing. <laughs> so I don't really worry about that. Uh, but Absolutely. anyway, that's how you get it. Very good. Well, Derek Johnson, thank you, good sir, for being here. We, we salute you as always. And uh, appreciate your time. We look forward to having you again in the near future as this uh, rallies to a close. Thanks again. Sounds good. Care, brother.